Whatever else a photograph may be about, it is inevitably about photography, the container and the vehicle of all its meanings. Hey, welcome to the Street Shots Photography Podcast. This is Antonio. This is Ward. And Ward, this is episode 159. See, I'm not forgetting. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, you'll never <laughs> let me live that down. Uh, no, I'm not going to let you live You're always that. in control, man. Those first 20 seconds are all yours. Only because you actually had me doubting myself. I actually was thinking, you know, maybe I am not remembering what I'm doing these days, which is certainly happening a lot more. I even forgot who your name was and what are we doing here? And I, That's I have no okay. We can remind each other. We're we can remind each other. other. Yeah. Well, I uh, don't want to spend too much time doing the banter because we have a guest waiting for us. We invited Dave Swiduck, our fellow unusual collective member and host of AIC Stories podcast. Dave. Yeah. yeah I'm Dave. here again. Thanks. You're here. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Dave's here, man. I'm here. No, yeah, that's the first time. It's usually Dave's not here. I mean. Oh, right. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Old, <laughs> the old throwback. <laughs> Dave, thank you for joining us. Today. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's always a pleasure to get to join you guys here. So, yeah. Something yeah, I don't and... get, I don't get to talk photography. I mean, we talk in our Discord some, but we've all been kind of tied up in our stuff been, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the conversation hasn't been flowing as often as, as usual, but I, I literally have no one at home or in my, my immediate circle that does photography. So I, I don't get to talk about it to anybody and it, it gets like pent up inside. And then you're like, Ugh, I talk to you guys every week when I listen to you, but you can't hear me. So. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you know, that, that means that, we're not going to be able, we're not going to be able to keep you quiet tonight, right? Well, that's usually the case. Anytime <laughs> I show up on a podcast, I, from what I hear from people that listen, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay i'm happy to take a back seat and you can just you can, <laughs> we need words it's all about the words and you do right. words really well so yeah that's it <laughs> no, well to, yeah well thank again thank you for the time and really appreciate it of course and uh what the reason why uh, i wanted dave on the show is uh, i'm trying not to tell too long of a story but i was listening to uh the candid frame with the barian x and uh, he had on a photographer uh, called Sig Harvey. And actually, Dave, you're the one who introduced me to her at yeah. some point earlier on in our interactions in photography. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll make sure I'll put the link of, the, of his show in the uh, in the show notes, but listening to her, uh, uh, him speak to her and starting to talk about... I'm going to look at my notes here because I always forget... Um, he brought up this idea right at the beginning of the show uh, that um, relating to Sig's photography and what she does, that in, at some point she stops taking pictures of something and starts taking pictures about something. And I was really kind of caught by that phrase. And another reason why that phrase comes into my mind a lot, the of, of and about, is... Um, when I was in a therapy group uh, a while back, and uh, one of the things that the facilitator tried to get me to do was instead of talking about something, <laughs> to mm -hmm. talk about my experience, which I kind of see here as sort of the reverse. And I, I always had this trouble with what is something, what does it mean to talk about something? What does it mean to talk of something? And so when I heard this, um, when uh, Barry Nix was talking to Sig about this idea of, you know, photographing, uh, taking pictures about something, it, it triggers something. And then of course, Dave, it, it, your, your face popped in my mind. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> right. Uh, mainly a, because, uh, because you introduced me to Sig Harvey's work some time ago. And also what started to sort of formulate in my brain about the differences between taking pictures of something and taking pictures about something was this idea of, uh, we were talking about this a while back about cinematic style photography. And I thought there was something related in there. 
And, and then of course I started thinking about my own work and what do I do? And I'm like, I, I realize I'm always taking pictures of something, you know, I'm, I'm showing people, uh, you know, you know, street photography. It's, it, it is this thing I'm taking a picture of more of a document. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I really, really want to understand and explore this idea of taking pictures about, um, about something. So I thought three of us, uh, and the rest of the audience can <laughs> listen to us try to figure this thing out <laughs> right. a little bit. And so that I can, I can try to figure it out a little bit. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to open the floor up a little bit, uh, and see if we can get started, but like for me, that, that concept is, it's a shift I had a little bit and I, I don't claim first off, let me just throw a disclaimer. I, I don't claim that my work is anywhere in the same vein as, as what Sig Harvey does or any of these masterful storytelling type of mm -hmm. photographers. I mean, it's something I strive for and, but it's something I noticed in myself where before I kind of found that shift, I was getting bored with photography because I was just seeing the same old thing. And I, I, I got mm -hmm. tired of trying to just find a new way to look at something. And I started realizing like, oh, there, you could take this, you know, scene that you see all the time and what's behind it, you know, what does it mean? And, and it's a real challenge because at that point you start thinking more in kind of the, the body of work mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or projects and, and it's something they talk about a little bit in that episode but it's kind of the idea of okay when does something start and and when does it end because you realize quickly that right. i'm noticing these moments and little stories behind but i don't know what they go to it's just something that mm -hmm. i saw that i'm like there's a connection to it more than just oh look it's a, a pretty sunset or a, a lonely street or whatever it is and it's it's more of like oh well this you know kind of feels like this scene from this movie or this thing that I personally connect with and finding a way to somehow impart that into the image you're making. And it's, it's, it's a journey that it's super rewarding, but oh man, oh man, is it frustrating too? Because I, I, I'm tend to be like, like you say you are, you know, when you shoot more taking pictures of things and it's a real mindset shift and something you have to pay kind of close attention to in order to, to, allow yourself to, I guess, open up enough to connect with a scene in order to find the meaning behind it, to find mm -hmm. the, the thing that it's about that you're trying to say, finding your voice, so to speak. Yeah. I'm definitely in the same camp as both you guys. And I, and I, you know, in the chat before in the last day or so, we've been talking about, um, you know, how, well, at least what I say, I, that thinking like this is sort of my last last resort. Um, I don't think like this. I think as exactly what you're saying. I'm glad you said that Dave about, um, you think of it as a body of work, you know, mm -hmm. you, you do a project. I have this neighborhood project thing that I've been doing, um, since 2017. And it's just little vignettes of not literally, but just little pictures of buildings and back alleys and, mm -hmm. um, recycling bins and stuff like that, that they're of the thing. The individual picture is of that thing, but you take them together and then they represent the city or they represent some aspect of urban reality, whatever, whatever. Right. Um, what I got from the Sig Harvey interview was she seems to be able to do that in an individual image. Yeah. Which is <laughs> astonishing. And mm. think of, look at her images and how does she do that? Um, and, and, and when she has these workshops and the students, you know, she, you know, she tries to encourage them at some point when, if someone is struggling is to, is to try and have, uh, her, 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 her workshop participants think not about the thing, but of the thing and how she gets them to do that. Um, and I think the suggestion was that things are blurry a little bit, or you pick a slower shutter speed, you make the image maybe a little bit more ethereal so that the viewer has to work a little harder. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess and, not only the viewer has to work harder though, the photographer, the photographer has to, absolutely has to work harder too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, you know, I was thinking like, is it, is it, I mean, they talked about this, the, I think Barry next was saying that in his class, he tells the students to go out and try to take a picture that is not in focus. Uh, and, and, and what then becomes of the photograph or what is it you have to spend some energy with? And it, it, I was thinking about this, is it just, well, 
you know, a photographer turning the, 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 the focus off on the camera uh, or the lens and, and suddenly now we have a picture about something. I was like, no, right. it's not that easy. It's not, it's not so simple to, to, uh, so a photographer has to, I'm sorry to interrupt more, but like a no, photographer no, I has was, to work just yeah. as hard to, to then create that and, and, and how to go about doing that. And, mm -hmm. um, it, it, like I wanted to make sure that it didn't become something like, well, you know, I don't want to be a street photographer anymore. I want to do something else. And I was like, no, mm -hmm. it's not that. I don't want to turn one thing off. Yeah. and turn another thing on it should be in your toolkit of things that you yeah. can, that you're able to do right right yeah. and and there is some, i just i t spent today um i was like usually doing friday afternoons after work when i want to decompress i head over to greenwood cemetery you know where i usually record you know uh, <laughs> the dispatches from greenwood uh and i you know grabbed my large lens and and wanted to photograph birds you know and you know again there's that uh, the, 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 sort of the goal is to sort of decompress, use my camera, take pictures, but I know I'm taking pictures of these birds, you know, and like, well, I'm, and, and I was, the, the topic of the show was in my mind and I was thinking, well, what can I do? <laughs> what can I do there to, to say something of Greenwood? I mean, about Greenwood, like, what do I want to say about it? You know, and blank, I, yeah. I just couldn't, I could not. And so I imagine that it is really, really not something that you can just switch on and off uh, in in yourself as a photographer to say, well, I'm suddenly going to start, you know, photographing about something, you know, taking pictures about something. Uh, or what do I have to say? You know, mm -hmm. that, it comes back down to that. What do I have to say as a photographer? And I've been thinking about this lately in general because, you know, my career has shifted. You know, I'm not you know, I don't even think I can't really call myself a photographer in, in the terms of like for the IRS <laughs> right. anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and for some strange reason, I think that's like, you know, if like I'm making money into photographer, then I'm a photographer. If I'm not, then I'm not a photographer. So I'm having this sort of identity crisis, uh, a little bit. Um, and so thinking like, I, I, how am I going to approach my photography now? How am I going to, what do I have to say? What do I, you know, when I'm gone, what is someone going to look at my work and say, oh, this is what, you know, it was what he was trying to tell people. And I was like, I don't have any idea about that. So I understand this is very, very hard. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've really ever thought about it or tackled a project in such a way. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to. I mean, I want to start incorporating and I want to understand it a little more. I mean, again, this is sort of the reason to play it out on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, as well as because um, maybe other people can benefit from this. Uh, I did want to make sure I wanted to throw this in and I'm going to read this because um, I took some notes down from the, from their podcast, but uh, sort of paraphrasing what Sig was saying to Barian X, but, but uh, she was saying before she grasped the idea of storytelling, she used to go out with her camera and wait for something to strike her. Uh, whereas when she moved to Maine, I'm not sure what Maine has to do with anything, uh, but when she moved to Maine, she came, uh, she came at it a different way where she sat in an empty room and thought, what do I want to talk about? The camera is, this is the, my favorite line. The camera is just an expensive pencil. Mm. Uh, start there rather than going out into the world and doing target practice. What do I want to say and how do I want to say it? Um, and I'm going to save this note because I think it's just, I think it's just brilliant what she said. I mean, first of all, the, the idea that a camera is just an expensive pencil. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, this, I mean, I really resonate when she says just go out and target practice. And I think so many f photographers who I come across, you know, people with cameras, I should say, maybe not photographers or people want to learn, but uh, a lot of it is target practice. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and how do we then move from target practice to using the camera as an expensive pencil? <laughs> yeah. Well, Sig's approach, you know, as you listen to that episode, the one thing too that's that's I think very important to the process is she learned at some point through this, you know, development in her own career that writing became a huge point of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the ability to express in a, in in 
physical format, pen to paper, pencil to paper, whatever it is, and get those ideas out of your head and then come back to them. And that's where she talks about how she finds a lot of the text for her books is, you know, expanding on these ideas, things that stick out. And I think it kind of helps train your mind to just be open to that stuff when you're shooting. The the biggest problem, like for me personally, and this isn't a, a how-to because I certainly don't have it figured out, but finding, you know, like you were saying, what you want to say, what what is it you want to say about something, that's hard enough in itself. The biggest hurdle I have personally is kind of a, a self-confidence thing where I feel like as soon as I put a photo up, I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to be saying something grand, you know, it, it's mm-hmm. not like photographing this, uh, you know, cup of coffee on this nice light in the thing. You don't have to be making some grand life statement. It's just whatever you want to say. This is a small moment and, and kind of thinking of it like you are the character, the the main character, the star of your film. What is, what is your character seeing? What are you going through? But the biggest problem for me is not feeling like a pretentious a-hole saying, well, <laughs> actually, this is what I, this photo means to me. You know, it's that kind uh-huh. of a thing. Mm-hmm. I struggle with that because I feel like as soon as I start thinking about it, like, well, I'm trying to say this thing, then other people are looking at it going, dude, that's just a, a picture of a cup of coffee. You ain't saying nothing. You know, I feel like even though no one's actually telling me anything, like I'm going to be judged for it. And that's the biggest hurdle, the first hurdle for, for me to try and smash through. And it's a constant battle, I think. But like anything, the more you do it, the the easier it becomes, I'm sure. But, you know, it's it's smashing well, Does it really that. become easier? I mean, really, does it become easier? I, I don't know. I'm hoping so. I mean, should it become easier, I should say? <laughs> yeah. Should I think if, struggle? You're, if you're flexing those sorts of muscles, I think... And you stay with it. I think you can get better. I mean, yeah. Well, if you really don't have an aptitude for it, that's uh, mm. um, that that's a different matter. Um, I was just thinking, as you were saying, as you were talking there, Dave. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I I the, the last time I had an experience that sort of f- f- fell around the conversation we're having was, I don't know, back in January or February, I went um, to shoot uh, speed skating mm-hmm. with a friend. I rented a camera. I rented an XT3 and a the, whatever the 40 to 150. Is that what it is? 50 to 140? 50 to 140. Yeah, I think that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, gr- great lens. I love that lens. The camera w- didn't work so well um, in that in that comp- particular circumstance because the close proximity to the skaters and so on. But I I really wanted. Uh, I really wanted to get an impressionistic picture of a speed skater, a single speed skater going by really fast with the ice blurring in the background and the arms and legs kind of blurred off into white. And I had this kind of idea that I could create this, this story. And I, I rarely ever talk about story in my images or when I'm shooting, I don't think of a story. I'm thinking for something that's just aesthetically interesting. Mm-hmm. And I failed. Like I, I knew knew of the tricks that you're supposed to do from my motorsport photography of how to pan and you know pan as the subject goes by and so on. And it was you know the timing wasn't great and all that kind of stuff. And I just and it goes to your self confidence point, Dave. You know, like yeah, I really wanted to have this this impressionistic image that kind of represented what I felt about these skaters. And I didn't quite make it. It doesn't mean I won't in the future, but, mm-hmm. um, it, it, you know, I, I'm stand, it feels like I'm standing at the base of a cliff. Like, yeah. like, like you're saying, like it, this, it's a, it feels like it might be a long climb. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that was, that, that was my experience with that. Um, thinking of that. I, um, I was, I was not to interrupt you. I was just thinking about something when no, you no, asked, no. when you asked, uh, should it be easier Maybe a better way to put it is is not that it gets easier, but it gets more comfortable. Um, in the same way a, a writer will put out their first book or start publishing their first short stories or poetry, you can tell they're a little nervous. That you know they, they haven't found their footing yet. But the longer they do it, I'm sure they still have nerves about how it'll mm-hmm. be received and all that. But I think they become more comfortable knowing okay, this is my process, this is my voice, and this is how I can use this tool to do what I want to do. 
So yeah, maybe getting more comfortable with it versus it becoming easier is, is maybe a better way to think about it because mm -hmm. uh, like you said, it, it probably shouldn't become easier. You should always be pushing, I think, to, to get better and learn and, and find new ways to approach what you're doing. And when it becomes easy, either you're fooling yourself probably or or you just lost a passion for it. So kind of just made me think of that when you when you said that. I'm like, yeah, that wasn't a good choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say, you know, the artists have to be raw, you know. Right. You're at the you're at the bleeding edge of um your 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 output is a representation of your bleeding edge of your mm -hmm. creativity and that it goes from what you know into the unknown and it's that edge that you're supposed to be. Yeah. How's that for pretense? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's true. You feel yeah, like it when, is. when you get to those images as photographers, when the, uh, the whole is worth more than some of the parts, you know, you mm -hmm. get this, you get those amazing images where it exceeded your expectations. And that really, that's sort of what you're going for. Mm hmm at least when I'm shooting street, which is a rare thing. And it feels like as much as, uh, uh, as target practice as any other form of photography, um, every now and then you get a ringer and it's, it's very satisfying. Yeah. Um, and there are many stories in street photographs. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes when someone, uh, you know, I photograph the sunrise cause I, well, I haven't done it in a while, but you know, cause I like it, you know, target practice, you know, photographing birds, target practice, <laughs> Uh, even I think some of my street photography, very much target practice. Um, and, you know, someone might say, oh, you know, it's a great picture, blah, 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 you know, and it's, hey, blah, blah. And, and I, I realized I find myself saying, well, almost jokingly, but now I'm thinking about it. Like I say, well, I'm just the messenger, right? Like somehow the the world, I'm just the conduit who's who's passing along the world to to somebody else. And I realized that, for some reason, when you guys were talking about this, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this, that that takes me out of the picture. Like I am. Yeah, it's funny uh, you say that because that's the way why? I feel when I have a really good picture. Sort of like I was the vessel through which this was created, and I'm not going to take respond. I'm not going right. to take credit for it. Right. I'm not going to yeah. take credit for it. I'm not going to. You know, it, it, nothing. You know, I won't take any credit for it. And and I'm starting to think that I don't know if that's a great way to sort of approach. You know having some sort of taking responsibility or like ownership, you know, mm -hmm. taking ownership of the subject that I'm, that I'm, that I'm working with. Um, and it, you know, it's so much more a mind change for me. Like mm -hmm. I, it's not, I need to do pictures differently. I just need to think differently about myself and like, okay, so I'm taking pictures in the street. I'm photographing people in my neighborhood or, you know, whatever. And what am I saying about this? Why am I, you know, what, I am not just the messenger, yeah. right? I, I'm not just the conduit. And we, again, we have our racetrack over <laughs> Jeez, don't get me started with that. But, um, and so I, I don't really want to continue my photography in the sense that I'm just passing things along, mm -hmm. you know, um, I want to start taking ownership and, and I don't really necessarily want to go and take my pictures out of focus. In fact, when I was walking around Greenwood today and I was like, well, I mean, I got out of the car for a minute and after I shot the photograph, the birds and I was like, you know, let me look at the tombstones again. And I started looking at it in different angles and I was like, you know what? This is BS. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying to say something that I'm not quite behind. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so yes, I'm back to being stuck. Like, do I need to make a project? I, do I need to, what is it that would be, I mean, Dave, I know you do a lot of writing mm -hmm. with your photography, or at least you have been. Right. And, and you were just talking about that before. And is, is that sort of the way you think for yourself that you've been able to sort of well, talk about why, you know, what, what you're doing with your own work? I, I think it's, it's kind of an, uh, a strange thing because uh, I, I don't ever sit down and write something and then look at that a few days later and think, you know what, I want to, I want to go find and, and create some photos to, to go with that. I, I never do that. And usually for me, if anything, it's the other way around where I'll see a photo or I'll have made a photo of something and, and it gives me an idea and I start, you know, maybe I think of something and write it. But more often than not, it's, they're kind of two separate things where I, I've been doing writing, I've been chewing on an idea, whatever it is, and I'll write out something and then kind of separate from that, I'll be looking through the catalog or whatever and 
scrolling through, or maybe I happen to make something, you know, a, a few days, a few weeks, months, whatever later, and realize, oh, this kind of fits with what I was thinking there. It's not, mm. it's not like I go out intentionally saying, here's my script for the day I wrote. Mm-hmm. Let me see what I can do to fill that out. It's nothing like that, but I think they are very connected because they're both an exercise in in allowing yourself to be active in in your own life. Um, and that's something I was thinking about when you were talking about you know feeling like you're just the messenger, you're the vessel. And I, I was going to welcome you to my my black couch here, um, <laughs> <laughs> because it, it yeah. made me think of something right away that. You know, if, if your mindset is such that you are just the vessel and you're not taking taking credit for it, at what point are you no longer an active participant in your own life? You know, and, and not to, you know, if, if we want to keep it just photography related, if you're only saying, wow, I, I made this great photo, like Ward, you were saying, and I don't want to take credit for that, though. Really, all you're doing is minimizing the fact that you no, are... I meant it as a super. I really meant it as a supernatural thing. Sure, like, sure. I was fortunate to be there. Is oh, really yeah, what yeah. I meant yep, it. Yep. I meant it in that context, not in the. Sure. It's not. It means nothing to me. It means everything. Oh actually. yeah, it's, yeah. That it's side a creative it. process. Yeah, I I mean though, like by when you share it and then tell people like I'm, I was just fortunate to be there. If you take no ownership on that. Even though as uncomfortable as it is, oh man, I know that I I, I hate feeling like look at what I did, you know. But uh-huh. by doing that, we really minimize our own role in in our own active participation in that process and our own vision, our own voice. Because whether you just were fortunate to be there and capture it or not, you still brought something to the table to see it and to be able to to do whatever you need to do to bring that image to life. And that's where it's, it's, I think the writing helps with that because it just kind of puts you more in touch with that same mindset, uh, more than anything. Um, you know, it's, it's not a magic switch like, Oh, I write in my journal every day. So now I'm a great photographer, right, right. you yeah, know, yeah. but it's, it's a constant practice that just slowly and incrementally helps you better understand and, uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to say visualize, but, but better be in touch, I guess. It sounds kind of, boy, I sound like I'm some, you know, hippie, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Make love, hey, not peace, war, man. Bro. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I don't mean to come across like that, but there is something there where you're kind of just more centered, more grounded and, and more able to understand what it is that you're feeling about what you're seeing. So you can then bring that back, you know, and, and uh-huh. look at things a little bit differently. Yeah, make it like a mini project of your work. You know, right. you, you tag certain images to be, okay, here's my, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it, your, the dream project or whatever, mm-hmm. where you're getting these images that are telling the story, that are right. more impressionistic, that do make, you had to work hard for, the viewer has to work a little harder mm-hmm. for, and you collect those. And then uh, that's how I, uh, that's how I do it with certain yeah. discipline, my stampede pictures or my whatever pictures. Right. And I reflect on them a lot, actually. Yeah. It's sick. Do you? Really? Oh, yeah, I do. And, and you know, I try, the next time I'm in that circumstance, what can I get that's that builds on what I just did? And it also, reflecting on those pictures, I know what I've done before, and so I mm-hmm. don't waste time creating right. the same kind of material. So there's definitely a, a and it's a proficiency thing, too, not mm-hmm. just a vision thing. Right. Um, so that's, you know, that, that's a way that I find I can do that. So mm-hmm. we could somehow, you know, just get off the start line and, and, just, you know, work on this, uh, uh taking pictures uh, about things instead of, of things, find the ringers, the ones that meet those criteria and put them in a place where they will be where we can reflect on them and then build from them. I can, I think, and I think that goes to what Sig was saying about sitting in the room and planning. Yeah. I think plan before and plan during and, you know, until you, until you exhaust it. Um, I think that's, uh, I think that's a thing to do for sure. It's a, it's a weird balance, I think, between planning it and thinking about it, you know, like, like she said, sitting in the room and, and, and going through that process but also staying almost hyper present in that moment mm. to really, 
you know, be able to kind of forget about the plans in a way because you've internalized them so much already. Like, you know, yep, this is what I'm doing. I mean, that's when you're talking about the projects, that's something I really struggle with. I, I can't, I mean, I get ideas like, oh, I could do a project on this and that, but nothing that really speaks to me. When I start thinking about my photo work like this in a body of work, I start realizing more and more that now I understand why the legends from years past, you know, the uh, the Cartier Bressons, the, the Walker Evans, the the you name it, they have a lifetime of work as their body of work. I mean, sure, mm-hmm. a lot of them would have, you know, smaller things that are broken up, these series that we know and, and famous things, but so many of them, the importance of their, their place in photography is because of that entire lifetime of work and it starts to occur to me you know years ago as I was kind of going down this path is that I don't know if I have a project other than this is my life kind of a you Uh know Uh not so much like a day in the life of but more of a here are these little stories little moments um, almost like still frames of the film about me you know in Uh what I experienced what I see what I'm thinking what I'm going through uh, mentally, physically, whatever it is. And it's a, it's a really bizarre thing that you start finding yourself mentally. And the more you think about it, you're just down this rabbit hole and going, well, where's the start line? <laughs> you know, how do I get going on this? <laughs> I, I, you know, you kind of think yourself right in circles and then find yourself wondering, well, this is great, but what do I do with all this stuff? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't have an answer on that. You know, both of you guys are saying something that, you know, in a board you're saying reflecting on your images. And, and Dave, what you just said, uh, you know, the, the project, the frames of your life. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, it's got me thinking, like, what what's a practical way of, of, of doing what you guys are saying? Like, teach me <laughs> what you guys, you know. Ward, what does it mean to reflect in your pictures? It's like sitting there in Lightroom looking at it. Y- yes. What, or I mean, but or what my is Instagram st- or I have albums on Smug Mug that I go through, private albums that I go through. Um, I look at my Mexico pictures a lot. Uh, I don't look so much at my, my uh, rodeo pictures so much, but um, my recent street work, what's has it matured? Is it any better? I'm, I'm, I'm definitely suffering from um a, a quality problem or a vision problem because i haven't been out in the last couple of years but mm-hmm. um i try to think and uh try to think about what i've done if i'm going to be going on a road trip like I, last weekend i went to visit my daughter again to change the tires in her car because <laughs> it's springtime now um and you know i'm going back to nelson what is it that i could shoot what is it i could do um and so i i went back through my old pictures um, and just reflected, okay, I've been here, I've done this, What? where am I going to go? I know the town well enough, what am I going to do? And just try and a- add on to what I've done before. And there's nothing stopping you from stopping something that's not successful and going in a different direction. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really right, cost us right. that much except the time mm-hmm. uh, to do it. And you say, you know what, I've done enough of this stuff on the train platform, I think I'm going to go back down on the sidewalk or go be closer to the people mm-hmm. um, till you find, till you find something. And then those pictures that are end up, you try stuff. And it, if you get this, I, I keep using the word impressionistic because that's the way in my mind, I think how I can create something that gives an idea about something versus uh, of something. Um mm. Yeah, I don't know. I think we just got to go out and practice and and see what we can do. I think I think we've got uh, we've got a project for each of us to try and do this, <laughs> and I think we should keep in touch yeah. about the relative success or failure of it. And there's nothing wrong with failing. I think mm-hmm. it's just um, you know, it's a learning process. Yeah, I, I think I'm... I think it's something we should we should definitely do. I think we're, we're sitting here ruminating about it. I think. Maybe our and and the difficulties we're having with it. Why don't you just go out and try stuff and see yeah. 
if we have any success and then maybe reconvene shows over. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we could see what are the lessons that we've learned right. here. And I think Sig's got it pretty much nailed. Her mm-hmm. thick pictures are just so, oh. you know, there's so much depth to them. Like yeah. how does she, she brings this whole wealth of, of, of knowledge and experience and, um, uh, intuition, uh, in, into into that work, and maybe we reflect on her work and other other photographers like her. Mm-hmm. Though I don't know there are very many. I, I'm going like to send you guys. I'm going to send you guys a link in our chat here. Um, this is a, a photographer. Well, Antonio, I don't know. Well, on your PC, you might be able to see it. You don't have to sign in. It's on Instagram. Um, her name is Susan, I believe, liked L I C H T, but her website is l i c h t years dot com, like light years, but liked years. Mm-hmm. Well, I would say okay. lit, lit, or you know, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but or lit, she, if it's German. Yeah, it could be. And she's someone I follow for a long time on Instagram, and and she follows me back. We talk every now and then, and she's attended a few workshops, I believe, with Sig Harvey, and she has this work that very much it's it's not the same as what Sig Harvey does, but it's very much like every image I look at. They're just these small, quiet little moments. Yeah. Mm. But they're just beautiful, and they're they're saying something. I mean, they are really just capturing, you know, documenting in a sense her life, but in a way where it's not just, oh, here was the birthday party, here was the, you know, whatever. They're they're moments and things that have meaning to her, and and it's someone. Man, I, I could look through her feed. I, I I rarely go on my main photo Instagram anymore because I get so busy with the podcast side trying to trying to do that stuff, but. I, I do make a point to go over and try and keep up with what she's doing because I just her work is beautiful and it's so inspiring too and it, mm-hmm. it's something about yeah, this it. This looks like sorry, it looks like this is someone who has something to say. Exactly, uh, yeah. And I just um, twigged in on. I'm sorry, Antonio. Just before yeah, I forget, um, that I just twigged in on something you said, Dave, about stuff that means something to her. Yeah. I go out on the street. I'm trying to find stuff that's outside of me that comes to me. Yeah. And we're going back to Sig's comments about sitting and planning and doing the stuff, mm-hmm. stuff that's important to her. Yeah. And that's the point of view that ah. I think is critical here. You find the stuff or or figure out what stuff's important for you and go find it instead of yeah. letting, instead of it, what's it, the, the lean in versus the sit back, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it is, you know. Find, yeah. figure out what's important to you and then go find it. Mm-hmm. And then that will have, then your perspective is going to be a much more you. you right. Know? That's yeah. a great point. E- easier said than done. For oh, me. Yeah. But I think that's it though. I think that's it. I mean, I, um, mm. you know, I've traveled a bit with my son and, and we've shot some, I've been very fortunate. We have a father-son relationship about photography and he's just started up here in the last two or three years. And he shoots, he loves shooting the detritus of downtown life in Canadian cities. So he shoots interiors of garbage cans and drug paraphernalia, stuff that's left behind by people. And I was thinking, oh, he's just this dark teenager, this dark 20-something but I'm looking over the body of his work, just over 20 or 40 images that he has. I'm like, he's got something here. You know? <laughs> like it's, it's important to him to show this. Yeah. Um, mm. And, and uh, you no, know, it's not easy stuff to look at. It's, uh, but he has, he has this point of view and he doesn't question it and he doesn't talk about it. He just, mm-hmm. he just does it. Um, so there's yeah. an inspiration. I mean, we take our inspiration from anywhere we can. And I look at this, and that, that's what occurred to me. I mean, I don't know. Uh, drug paraphernalia at a bus stop doesn't really uh, <laughs> you know, have a relationship to, to you know, a, a water glass on a, on a you know, a satin tablecloth um, mm-hmm. that Susan Licht has here. But there's that kind of controlling the frame, and this is what, mm-hmm. this is what I see. This is what right. I see. This is what I feel. Right. And I'm, I think I'm think i'm starting to get it i don't know i i <laughs> i'm sitting here almost stunned because before before we recorded ward was like i, I don't know though i have much 
much oh, to no, add. I, I, well, I said I was going to skirt around the conversation. Yeah, that's what it was. I that's what it was. Yeah. And, and suddenly uh, I'm watching this light bulb pop on behind your eyes. I'm like, whoa, this is a moment. It's happening. I love it. It's a moment. Absolutely. You, you know, you, you were mentioning something earlier, and I, and I say this kind of tongue-in-cheek, but also kind of in, in, in seriousness, when you talked about, like, seeing things as the, like, the impressionistic way and, and how you view things. And, and I was thinking, like, oh, in terms of art, if, if I opened up and let people in my mind, I'm terrified it's going to be, like, some dark, twisted version even worse than Salvador Dali in there. And <laughs> that, that's what makes me nervous, I think, because I have a lot of, I mean, I'm not an unhappy person and we all got struggles we deal with and, and things we're going through, but my mind just wanders in the most random of ways. Like it drives my wife crazy because we'll be talking about something serious and I, I, you know, right in the middle of a thought, I'm onto something else and I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but it's like, oh man, that's. That might be a, a weird, strange place I find myself in. <laughs> well, it might be worth, you know, maybe take a couple of pictures of that mind state and yeah, see what to. you come up with. No, like uh, when you're in that state, take a picture and see what. Well, I'm never what... out of it. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just a different kind of guy sometimes. <laughs> you know, um, I'm, I was looking at my notes and something popped popped in. It's just how to how to how to express yourself with the camera. Mm-hmm. And um, I, you know, to go back into my time, my history a little bit, but mm -hmm. I, um, I always wanted to draw. Oh, uh, like it was drawing was something, and I, 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 you know, when I was a kid, I could draw, but it wasn't like good enough. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to go to an art school. I ended up going to this high school called High School of Art and Design. But I was also doing, you know, photography as well. And I realized that, you know, that was a great way to get into art schools and, you know, express myself with my camera and, you know, be a photographer or take pictures, I should say, and go for that reason because I couldn't draw, right? You know, um, I actually envy people who can draw because you're oh. like, I want to draw a spaceship yep. in an asteroid field, right? Mm -hmm. And um, one of my favorite artists is this guy, uh, Chris Foss, who does these if you know his work is like grand science fiction, like giant spaceships mm -hmm. in with asteroids and in space. That's the, like a nebula. And I, I want to, I wanted to draw like him and I couldn't, I couldn't come close to that. I tried, I would even copy, try to copy some of his work. And I couldn't do it. So photography. Okay. Well, photography is, is the way I can express myself, but am I expressing myself with my camera or am I just sort of, picking up on things and, and recording them. And I think that is, I'm still doing that. I'm still not expressing. I, 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 how can I say this? You know, if you're a still life photographer, you can set something up, right? You know, right. do all this. And that feels like you're in some control. I'm in some control of what I'm trying to create and what I'm trying to say. In fact, I think the last thing, I, we were talking about this, I think it was the last episode, was the light painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember, and remember, Dave, that we were, it was, I, I can't remember how that started. It was just like, try something different, right? Yeah, yeah. We were talking about it. I think it was in our group or something yep. like that. And I and I just picked up and went and decided to do light painting because I never done light painting before. And all yeah. of a sudden, I mean, light painting actually felt, even though it's sort of a technique and a mm -hmm. I don't want to say a shtick, but it's a thing that you can, but when I was making the pictures, I felt like I was actually in control and it was, yeah, you know, cause I'm waving a light, you know, in, in the dark <laughs> and I'm lighting the stuff myself and I'm like, Oh, let me grab this thing. You know, like, right. you know, I, I don't, know, I grabbed like an airplane model that I had or something like that. And suddenly I, I, I felt a little bit of like, okay, I'm expressing myself through photography, right? you know, a little bit more. I haven't gotten back to that in a long time. And so I I want to get back to that. But is it about projects? Is it about technique? I mean, they're talking about the language of photography. And like, you know, I'm looking at some of these pictures. I know some of them are double exposures, which is a kind of a cool mm -hmm. effect to then, you know, help express. And, you know, I never even thought about doing double exposures. Um, is it is it technique that can help uh, express ourselves? What is the 
trying to find the the trip wire. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, what is it that can start? I, I, I've had little, like I said, inklings of it. Mm-hmm. Light painting and maybe something else. You know, um, it, it is hard, right? And it shouldn't be easy. Mm-hmm. That's what we were just talking about before. Mm-hmm. But how to, you know, pick up that camera? And I, Dave, I really feel that your work does that. Like when you go out and you take pictures in your area of the quiet streets at night and stuff like that, I really get the more of the sense that you're in control of it. You're you're expressing something. You're you're using the camera to express yourself what what's going on um uh so how i don't know what can you what i'm not asking the question right but Mm -hmm. because this is hard for me i I Um, think you said something there about the technique side knowing in in the knowledge and the the technical side obviously that allows you to better uh, pull off whatever it is you're trying to do but or, mm-hmm. or say I should say, but I really think that that style of photography, like we've been talking about, is almost on the polar opposite end of the technique and technical side. It's the mm-hmm. side where obviously these, you know, like like Susan's pictures we're looking at and Sig Harvey, these people are extremely competent behind the camera. They know what they're doing, but I don't think you know, and I could be wrong. But my guess is when they're looking when when they're making their their work, I don't think they're thinking about any technical techniques or special. You know, I think they just see it and and find a way to do it. And a thought occurred to me because we've all listened to to Brooks Jensen, you know, a ton right. as well from from mm-hmm. lens work. Brooks and Sig Harvey, in a lot of ways, are almost the the two opposite ends of the spectrum. Brooks has the mentality of he's a collector. You know, he goes out, he collects all the stuff. Then he takes it back and he looks to see how things fit together. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. Sig Harvey on the other side, I don't get the feeling that she's so much a collector as she is more of a, you know, she wants to say something. And and she's very, very intentional with what she's doing. And... I mean, I think it'd be easy to try and, you know, as we're trying to figure this out ourselves, to swing, you know, all the way to one side and all the way back and bounce back and forth. Finding that middle ground between Brooks and Sig basically (laughs) is kind of the the really cool sweet spot to be where it can still be spontaneous. You're still finding those moments, but you're also very intentional with what those moments mean to you. And I don't know how to get there. But it's just something that occurred to me when you were talking, you know, and, and when mm-hmm. you mentioned the technical side, I thought, oh, that's it's interesting because they're kind of the two ends of the spectrum where one is necessary for the other. But at the same time, uh, like SIG's approach is not necessary for the technical. You know, if, if you want to go out and just make technically amazing fine art work, you don't need to be able to, to see or, or speak visually like SIG Harvey. It, it's interesting mm-hmm. how, how that works mm-hmm. together. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think you. I think you. That's a good point. Um, as for as for your 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 struggles, Antonio, um, you did you did light painting. It seemed to work for a while. Mm-hmm. I you know there's something else like all these different inspirations like uh, my son and his garbage cans and all that kind of stuff. You know, try that. Try, you know, what is it Mike Meyer says in the movie, you know, oh, I'm just, just putting it on, you know, just, <laughs> just see if it fits <laughs> and, and, and go on to the next thing. Um, right. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And you may stumble on, or I would say we keep it up. We'll, mm-hmm. we will eventually stumble on something that has a deep meaning mm-hmm. for us. And it's a, uh, and it can be a surprise. Yeah. Mexico was a completely, complete surprise. I thought it was just going to be travel pictures it ended up being much deeper than that it ended yeah. up being uh more about humanity than i could have imagined um you know i think we just got to keep plugging at it that's why we're here we have time mm-hmm. some of us have more time than others but we have mm-hmm. all of us have time well and i think if we're being creative we we have to go these different directions right to, i, I to really find I, something I think about how often, you know, the three of us have talked in our in our Discord and you guys have talked here on the show about that feeling of, you know, 
why are we making these photographs? What are we, what are we doing? You know, is it to sell or make money? And I don't think, you know, it's great if you can chase that dream and, and get paid to, to make work. But I think this is kind of the, the answer, Ward, what you're talking about is this is why you do it. You know, this is what's going to bring you that personal fulfillment to keep you pushing and, and digging and exploring and trying these new things. Because, like you say, you know, you, Antonio, you've got uh, scratching at the surface of these couple little things and, you know, not quite there mm-hmm. yet, but just chase them, you know, throw yourself, you know, over to the whims and something's going to click. And if you're there scratching at the surface, it's just a matter of time, I think, before boom, you know, oh, that's what was missing, (laughs) you know, whatever that is for you. There's something you said earlier about, um, like writing Mm -hmm. and the visualization you might have when you're writing Mm -hmm. and not that you would write a script and then go out and photograph it, but, um, wondering if the mere act of, um, opening your mind up to your imagination and, Mm -hmm. and visualing, visualizing whatever it is in your head, you know, like whether it's, a, you know, in a sense like a dreamscape or mm-hmm. uh, a fantasy or whatever, but, you know, p- putting all those parts in your head and putting them on paper, I wonder if that somehow opens up your mind in ways in, like, the real world, you know, when you're walking mm-hmm. around, suddenly you're not sort of confined to what you see day by day, like, okay, well, you know, the can't, you know. The fence is over here. It's always been like this. Right. The, the, the garage is over there. But when I start talking about, when I write about the garage, when I write about the fence, mm-hmm. suddenly in my mind's eye, I'm, I'm, I'm having to explore it differently. And then mm-hmm. maybe that just sort of chisels away at the, the, you know, the typical way that we're looking at things. Right. You know, I was just, I'm, I don't know if that's true or not, but it, it, it feels like maybe in this case for you and maybe for mm-hmm. me, I don't know, writing would be a way to do that. It could be painting, right? Mm-hmm. It could be trying to draw again, mm-hmm. um, dancing. I don't know. What is it that, that could sort of unblock? Maybe there's a blockage mm-hmm. um, because, you know, photography is this thing, you know, and you got to, I, you know, for me, it's like, I do it this way. I got to yep. get in the car, <laughs> go out and do the same <laughs> thing over and over again. And, and it doesn't, for it ends up not being fulfilling right and you know it's fun and you know i get the wow factor i think brooks jensen i was listening to one of his episodes he's talking about the wow factor you know yeah. you look at a picture and you say wow like the photographers you you the viewer is saying how did the photographer do that right but it's a very one-off thing you know yep. and in, in this these pictures of susan licked uh like uh, however we pronounce her name sorry if i'm mispronouncing it there's there's so much i mean there's a simplicity Mm-hmm. to the work which is also in like harvey's work mm-hmm. um there doesn't seem to be any pretension in it or something i don't know it's just like here here's i'm sitting here looking at my coffee table i grab my camera and i got this you know take a picture yep you know and it's not um you know there's nothing blocking there's no blockages here mm-hmm. I'm, I'm seeing but anyway i'm just sort of going off on this with your this, uh, ramble your thoughts on the on the writing though i i it's something even, I mean, I write quite frequently, but I, I, I still strive because I, I want to do better. I want to, I, I strive to write every day and in some form I do, but I, I really want to get to that point where I know that regardless of anything else I'm writing, I'm taking time to just write kind of those personal observations, you know, feeling through things and, and that more internal stuff. But when you talked about like the fence with the garage and everything else, I think what writing does as you're sitting there writing about it, saying, oh, yeah, I walked by that fence and garage. Now the next time you go look at it, you're going to notice, oh, there's that fence. Boy, I never noticed that that big chip out of the wood over there on that side. I wonder how that happened. You know, or, or you know, you, you start noticing how maybe the bottom of the garage has got some moss growing on it or who knows what that you never noticed before because you're thinking about it a little more mm-hmm. than just an object you, you see every day. And that's where I think that can really help, you know, no matter what your, your creative practice is, I think writing is, you know, as I get older, I find personally, I find that's something that any creative, you know, artist type person can benefit from because it's, it just kind of helps prime the pump, so to speak, 
you know, and, and huh. it leaves yeah. you okay. leaves you a little more uh, ready to to go, ready to to visualize or see or whatever it might be. And that might end up leading you to one, I should say, to you know, approach like say photographing the fence is not just a shot of the fence, mm-hmm. but now it's more about the fence or yeah. how you or how, a, about how you feel about the fence, right? Yeah. Or how you feel about the garage, right? Which and is it doesn't have to be something like I said earlier, big and profound that you're saying, right? It doesn't I mean, have to be. Very much no. could be like, oh man. There was some craftsmanship put into this that I appreciate. You know, it could be as simple as that. Or it could be, man, why don't those people get off their butt and take care of their fence? Because this thing's peeling and, <laughs> you know, cracking, falling down. Yeah. could be anything yeah. small. And, and I think when we talk about, you know, what are we trying to say with our photographs? I think all three of us are guilty of falling into the trap, like feeling like, well, I've got to come up with something that's going to, have this big impact, this kind of profound statement when really those quiet moments that mean something to us are actually the most powerful that we can put out there. I, I, I think, yeah. you know, you know, that's, that's definitely the argument with Sig and Susan here, right? Yeah. Um, that's these, these quiet moments are monumental. Yeah. Mm. I was just thinking about, uh, uh, um, I went on a road trip, a California road trip with my mom in 2018. And I was thinking, uh, because her her memory as she's getting older was not so good, I encouraged her to do a journal as we went every day uh, yeah. before we went to bed to, to do a journal of what, what we did and all that kind of stuff. And she loves that. She goes through it now mm-hmm. all the time. Uh, what I did at the end was I wrote a little poem for her. Oh. Um, of an impression and I could, that's something I think I could do. Yeah. Hmm. And if it talk about impressionistic, um, yeah. and it, and for me, that bit of poetry represented the whole trip and you remember everything. And in fact, the, the poem is about memory. I love it. Hmm. Um, so uh, I think, I think we, well, I think we've all got doors we can open here. Yeah. Um, uh, of, you know, let's go multimedia. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm big, uh, uh, yeah, I'm getting kind of inspired here. Well, right. yeah. the, the the written word has paired with the, the still image for ever, you know, probably. Yeah. I, I would think with paintings even, you know, back in the day, I, I don't know about then, but there's power in, in the written word, I think. And if if nothing else, then just untapping your own real thoughts on something. I, I had another thought real quick be, you know, to to kind of put a cap on it is, you know, we always wonder, like, what will happen when we're gone? You know, what, do, what mm-hmm. do all these images mean? And when you think about these moments like this, this is the stuff that means something to those you leave behind. It's It's not the, you know, it's not to discount, like, if you're a, a fine art landscape photographer, that's not discounting that work. That's going to mean something, too. But when you can do something like this, this is the kind of work that your, you know, siblings or offspring or whoever it is can look at and say, wow, that there was a passion in that life, you know, and, and, you know, it might not be a chronological memory trip, but it might be, you know, something more that's, that's really giving them an insight as to who you are and and what it is that you're, uh, makes you, makes up everything that, that you are basically, so. Hmm. It's kind of, I, that, that thought is still kind of forming in my head, but I look at it and I think of, of you know, my kids are 10 and, and 13 now, and I've taken a ton of photos, but I, I look at this and I think, man, I wish I could have found a way to unlock this side of myself and, and become, quote unquote, proficient in it, to have captured their lives in this way from the start. You know, in my own life, you know, I came to photography a little later in life. Um, but I think about all, all the friends I had, all the times and, and things I did that at most I have, have some snapshots of that I cherish, but they're not powerful like, like this stuff, you know. And it kind of leaves you feeling a little bit of regret, but also that kick in the butt to say, well, you didn't right. do it then. But, yeah, they, mm-hmm. it's not too late to, to start that. And, I, I imagine, like with the journals, I have this dream of someday, you know, when I'm when I'm dead and gone, hopefully not not for many years, but <laughs> having my kids or grandkids, 
go, you know, in, in my room or wherever it is and find this bookshelf just full of journals I've kept, whether it be random thoughts, the, the chronological daily stuff, thoughts on what I'm reading or watching, any of that, and just having book upon book of me. You know, and it's not in a narcissistic way. It's it's in a way that those are the things that I can share there that maybe no one in my life knows about, you know, because I, it's something you're just not comfortable making public. But I think that's so amazing. I, I know I, I got recently, my, my grandfather, as you guys know, passed uh, 2019. Um, mm-hmm. And he was in the, in the Navy in World War II, served in the Pacific. And my dad and I were going through some, the last bit of some things that, um, we're kind of just boxed up and we found in there, it's a, uh, it was just like a, a bag, a bunch, a stack of letters. And we're like, Oh, what are these? We looked through them and realized these were every single letter he wrote home to his parents while he was serving in world war two in the Navy. Wow. And, and it's fascinating looking at these because it's a side of him that he never talked about. He very mm-hmm. rarely would talk about the war. And, and you're getting to see some stuff and there's some of it's very like standard. Hey, ma, you know, what, Hey mom and dad, what's going on? I miss you guys, whatever. But then there gets to be some other stuff that's a little more, you know, intense. It's like, wow, we never, never even knew that about him, you know, and it's, it's fascinating. And to be able to leave that, I think that's a legacy worth, worth achieving. And to do that, uh, with photographs yeah, would be, would be, uh, quite something as well mm-hmm. all right well guys i think i'm gonna wrap it up <laughs> <laughs> yeah that um, got heavy i'm just realizing we're uh just lost my we just lost my camera but uh, <laughs> battery exhausted um dave jeez okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> no, <that's> a... <laughs> no apologies <laughs> never on the show here we go Never on this show. Uh, all right, I'm trying to get my camera up and running so you guys can see me. Anyway, uh, so we, well, do we have a takeaway from this? Let's just is there quickly uh, final words on this before we wrap it up. Ward, I'm going to leave it to you. Yeah, well, Ward. Okay, uh, uh, we'll quote Nike. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking with the the minimalist, simple, I, I like it. <laughs> I yeah. think I Impactful. think we I think there's been some revelations here. I think uh, we have we have some work. I have some work to do for sure. Yeah, I, I a lot do of work this do, yeah. instead yeah. of just going back and complaining about what we can't do. Right. Uh, you know, identify those things that are important to us in w- whatever that means mm-hmm. for the day, for your life, for your family, I don't, whatever it is, mm-hmm. and go look for those things out in the world and, and try and capture them. Mm-hmm. Whether they're in metaphor or they're literal or whatever, I just it doesn't matter. You just have to try yeah. and go out there and do it. Right. That's my takeaway. Yeah. Well, I think I've, I'm basically taking that in, in the same way. And I realize, like, uh, it's never, Dave, like you said, it's never too late to start. Right. Um, and I realized that, uh, I need to get started on this. Um, it's something that I really want to do because I feel like I'm, I'm lacking, you know, I mean, some people might argue, no, you're not, you're not you're doing great. And it's like, yeah, but there's still something empty that I want to fill up and, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no better time than, than now to start and, uh, yeah. So I got, it would give me some, you know, in a sense, it gave me some purpose. You know, it's nice to have that kind of mm. purpose with photography rather than just doing target practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, which is it. fun. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just like no. we were talking about, there's absolutely nothing wrong with grabbing the camera, taking pictures and stuff like that. But in addition, mm-hmm. what can we use? What can I use my camera to say about me? Mm-hmm. What, Mm-hmm. Will somebody look at my pictures in some period of time or even now and say, I can maybe know him a little bit mm-hmm. more, you know, uh, which is not necessarily narcissistic. It's just like we all want to sort of know each other. And yeah. it, it's fascinating to see the world through someone else's eyes and, and, and have those experiences. And so 
Um, I think that's what a lot of people are wanting to do, especially everybody sharing things. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to share their pictures and their experiences and stuff like that. And so, you know, how to do that in a, I don't want to say in a more meaningful way, but in a more intense way or more uh, intentional, thoughtful, intentional. Yeah. Way. yeah. Yep. Be, be, have intention. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's actually one of my meditations in the morning. It's the, the, a guided one that a guy says, you know, go and have intention. Mm. Um, which now I'm thinking about in terms of photographs. So, all right. Cool. cool. Very all right. Cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. This is this is actually more for me than uh, it is for anybody else. <laughs> this is close. We got to a black couch and we have for a while. It's close. It's it? close. Yeah. It, it was got, good. I'm, got... I'm inspired right now. Like I want to. Yeah. It's it's late, but I want to I want to grab a camera right now and and <laughs> get to work. Yeah. So. Well, and I got and you can see like I got three pages of notes, so I know how to write, and you yeah. know I can I can. Uh, I don't I need got, to do that. I'll just listen to the show again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too lazy to write notes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, Dave, hey, um, why don't you let the world uh, know where we can, where they can find you? Well, almost everything I do, there's, I'm going to give you just two websites because I'm on social media all over, but um all of my podcast stuff, which is where I'm most active, you can find everything through AICstories.com. Um, that'll link to all the social medias, Instagram, Twitter, all that. But that's all storytelling, uh, book-related content, that kind of stuff. My photo work, if you go to usuallydave.com, um, that's where I put up when I write essays or share things like that. And that'll also have links to all my photography social medias, which I've been sorely neglecting because I've been focused on the podcast side. But um, you, there's a lot of stuff on the website there already, you know, essays and, um, you know, different thoughts on photography and albums and all that kind of stuff. So there's a ton of stuff there you can check out too. So, Oh, great. Well, we'll check it out. Well, and, and uh, of course, the Unusual oh, Collective, right? The Unusual Collective. Yeah, yeah. whatever our which site is... is there, I forget. <laughs> Unusual collective dot it's photo is it dot fo- dot photography dot photography that's what it was yeah is it unusual photography no. something like that. unusual collective dot photography there we go yes and and some of your essays are up there too yeah so yeah. Of all actually all of our essays are up there yep great thanks thanks very much uh, Ward where are you these days uh, you can find me on Instagram at Ward Rosin Fine Art. That's W A R D R O S I N Fine Art. Um, I'm on uh, Twitter as uh, W Rosin Photo, and I uh, have a website as Rosin.ca. Um, there's not much there. You can buy the book that Mark Ryerson and I created a few years ago about the rodeo, and uh, I'm on Facebook as Ward Rosin Photography. And that's where you can find me. And our unofficial sponsor is? Oh, yes. Ornis Photo. O-R-N-I-S. <laughs> Ornis dot photo. It's a little lens and adapter site. Yes. So. Wonderful site. Wonderful lenses. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Lots of fun. Yeah. Thanks for Impressionistic thanks for images us. coming yes. your way. <laughs> <laughs> and, that crazy 35 millimeter 1.2, man. It focuses like a donut, but that's fine. Yeah. Focus is like a donut. Mm. It's not flat field, right? So yeah. it's right. wide open. It's it's riding a wild horse, that thing. <laughs> Just what I need is another lens. Yeah, I won't have to look into that. Right. <laughs> and uh, me, I'm still off of Instagram, which is actually, you know, an interesting story unto itself. Um, I'm not missing it so much. But if you go to my Instagram, it's amrosario. Don't follow me. <laughs> you can see my work. <laughs> Don't follow uh, Am Rosario on Twitter. I'm spending some more time on Twitter and uh, Rosario Photo on um, uh, Facebook. And our Street Shots podcast is on Instagram. Street Shots podcast. I haven't posted anything lately because I just haven't been on Instagram, but uh, do so later. And uh, I don't know. I think that's it. That's where you can find us. So cool. Yeah. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. Uh, Ward, as usual, and Dave, thank you for giving us your time. Absolutely, it's always well. a pleasure. It was a very good time, and and we'll have to follow up on on, on some of this stuff. Yeah, so keep that in your uh, pencil, that in your book, so. for sure. 
Cool. All right, guys and everybody. Uh, until next time. Wow, we made it through the middle of May. I didn't bring it up at the beginning of the show, but this is the show for the middle of May. We'll see you guys at the end of May. And uh, Dave, good night. And Ward, good night. We'll see you. We'll see you guys. Take care. All right. Ciao.